Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Take a quick gander at what we stumbled across. But I resent you trying to destroy the Catholicity of the simple and the poor and the elderly by your ways. I know I'm not going to accept that. I'm a Roman Catholic. You dare do that. You can't stand Catholicity at this height. You have to spoil it. Have you spoiled so many things in these 30 years? What was Catholic cable station EWTN's foundress Mother Angelica talking about? Her jumping off point was a blasphemous presentation of the Stations of the Cross at the 1993 World Youth Day in Denver where the role of Jesus was portrayed by a woman. But that was just the beginning. Mother lined them up and shot them down. Every rotten, filthy, her heretical malfeasance present in the church that she could think of, she let them have it. I'm tired of your theologians who do nothing but divide and separate and destroy it's time. It's time we say that. I don't like your kind of religion. I don't like your ways. You have no compassion, no love, and no obedience. You are the group who says, I will not serve. Fine. You have a will. You don't have to serve. But I want to serve. You have no right to destroy people's faith, the faith of the children, the faith of the elderly. But who is the you she's directing her comments to? She was talking about the revolutionaries in the church who shattered the faith for tens of millions of Catholics. That's who. And she wasn't just talking about ideas and ideologies. Ideas and ideologies have specific people behind them, pushing them, promoting them, spreading them. And when those people are given over to evil, which anyone is who does not present the whole truth of Jesus Christ, those promoters of revolution in the church are controlled by Satan, just like Judas was. And don't be fooled, my fellow Catholics, by nice-sounding or happy talk coming from the mouths of some church leaders. Never forget that Judas performed miracles in Jesus' name. He did preaching. He was engaged in every single work that the other apostles were engaged in, and yet he is in hell. Oh, and for the Church of Nice crowd out there that will say, well, the church has never officially declared Judas is in hell. Pipe down, would you? The church doesn't have to. Jesus Christ himself did. What else do you think he could have possibly meant when he called Judas the son of perdition? In John's Gospel, while praying to the Father for his disciples, specifically for his disciples, Jesus mentioned that he, quote, protected them and kept them safe and that none of them were lost except the son of perdition. Go ahead, Church and Ice, try spinning that one. And for all the Father Robert Barron fans out there who have swallowed his anti-Catholic tradition babblings of, we have a reasonable hope that all men are saved, not according to Almighty God, we don't. I will believe in heaven and hell and purgatory. It's my right. And you have no right to destroy that. Live your life. Live your falsehood. Live your lies. Leave us alone. Do what you want to do. You have that privilege from God himself. But don't pour your poison, your venom, on all the church. So here's the skinny on all of this. In the 1970s through the early 2000s, a series of very powerful bishops in the United States wreaked havoc on the church. They promoted and ordained homosexual clergy, covered up homosexual sex abuse, tore the liturgy apart, the mass. They tore it apart with their destructive innovations and novelties that were designed to do just that. They were enemies of Jesus Christ, just like Judas was, who, by the way, for his lack of supernatural faith, Jesus came right out and called him a devil. So 
Don't be surprised at all, my fellow Catholics, that there are devils among the bishops. There was one right in the middle of the apostolic band. These bishops who brought revolution to the church during my lifetime, like many of you in your 50s and older, I watched this unfold right before my eyes, mostly when I was an altar boy. These bishops have either died or retired for the most part, the ones who brought the revolution, but in their wake, they raised up the next generation of bishops, the ones who are running the ship today, and many of them are disciples of these original traitors to the faith. The first batch brought revolution. The second batch keeps the spirit of the revolution going. The first group introduced evil innovations into the church. That's what Mother Angelica is talking about. She was speaking directly about and to the revolutionaries when she made those comments back in 1993 because the original revolutionaries were still installing the revolution. I don't care whether you like it or not. It's time somebody said something about all these tiny little cracks that you have been putting for the past 30 years into the church. And now you tell us when to stand and when to sit. You tell us that I cannot kneel before the presence of my Lord. You're not going to do that. But you spread your errors to children. And our children don't even know the Eucharist anymore. They don't understand that that is the Blessed Sacrament. That's the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. Your catechisms are so watered down they say nothing except love your neighbor. No, you've got to love God first. You've got to live with God in your heart. You can't give what you don't possess. I don't like your church. You have nothing to offer. You do nothing but destroy. But these evil and cunning men who deliberately engineered this outcome knew that they would need to have disciples in place to continue the revolution after they had moved on. So they made sure that as many weak men or ambitious men or any other type of man they could brainwash or control, including homosexuals and dissidents, anyone except good, solid, holy, orthodox men were being ordained. They stacked the deck to ensure that men who had been successfully programmed in their youth would take over and complete their work. Many of those men are today's bishops, ordained to the priesthood and consecrated to bishops by the original gang of revolutionaries. They may not have the same wicked motives that their predecessors had, but they still march to that same beat. That's why they say nothing about sexual immorality in the church. They won't open their mouths about it. That's because they were taught as seminarians and young men not to talk about such things. It upsets the people, they were told by the evil-minded bishops. Make the Mass more friendly so people will get something out of it, they were told by the evil-minded bishops. They were taught by the same bunch to give Holy Communion in the hand. What they were not told was the reason why they wanted to do this, which was to destroy the faith of the, of the Catholic faithful in the real presence of Jesus Christ to make the church Protestant in substance. That's what they were taught. What they were told was that it would make reception more meaningful for the faithful, that the faithful should receive in their hands standing up so they could be adults in their faith. Hogwash. It destroyed their faith. Listen again to Mother Angelica. I don't care whether you like it or not. It's time somebody said something about all these tiny little cracks that you have been putting for the past 30 years into the church. And now you tell us when to stand and when to sit. You tell us that I cannot kneel before the presence of my Lord. You're not going to do that. And true to form, like unthinking, useful idiots, to use the phrase attributed to Vladimir Lenin, for promoters of a cause whose goals they are not fully aware of and who are used cynically by the leaders of that cause. Many of today's bishops just carry on with the abuses, seemingly unaware that they are doing the work of the revolution. Mother Angelica did what she could 20 years ago to unmask the revolutionaries and their revolution. She isn't capable of doing the same with today's sons of the revolutionaries, so someone has to today. 
The revolution didn't come to a halt and die when these men finally moved on. Like all revolutions, once it gained control, well then it could change its tactics. In Mother's Day, there were the sub they were the subversives. Today, they are the ruling elite. And once a revolution reaches a certain critical mass, there's no longer any need to be subversive. Once it has achieved its goals, it shifts into phase two. First, there is the overthrow, that's phase one, and believe us, mission accomplished. The church has been nearly destroyed in the West. Now, we are in phase two, the maintenance phase, the maintaining of it, where the old can never be allowed to return. Keep the revolution in place for long enough, and most people will, with the passing of time, will simply come to accept the conditions as normal, and they have. Most Catholics accept the evils of contraception. They reject the authority of the church. They don't believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, and that includes many clergy. They don't go to Mass. They don't go to confession. They think most people are going to heaven, and no one really goes to hell, of course, except Adolf Hitler. They support sodomy, cohabitation, premarital sex, divorce and remarriage. Most are apostates to the faith, which means the revolution achieved its goals. And now, many of the current bishops who have taken over control from the revolutionary bishops do next to nothing to undo the evil. They allow much of this to continue, these evils which destroy the souls of those in their charge. They had better repent and change course because they will be held to account for not fighting the evil with every ounce of strength that they can muster. Too bad Mother isn't around today to blast this lot like she did their teachers. The time has come for an authentic Catholic uprising. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.